Ah, the sun is shining, birds are chirping. What a nice day to lose some brain cells. So apparently Russell Brand recently went on Joe Rogan's podcast and talked a lot about a couple of different things. And one of those topics was about the vaccine versus natural immunity. Which, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that natural immunity is in general not as good as vaccinated immunity. But we'll get to that more later. I found a video of Ben Shapiro, of all people, reacting to this, so I'd like to take some time to debunk his nonsense. Roll the tape. All right, it's time for some things I like and then some things that I hate. So things I like today. So Russell Brand is one of the most creative minds out there. Russell, Russell is a fascinating guy. I've had several conversations with him. He is shockingly intelligent and also just eclectic as all hell. Right. Russell Brand intelligent? That couldn't be further from the truth. He preaches such nonsense, but disguises it in word salad, so to the uneducated appears to be intelligent, but doesn't really have much going on up there. Anyway, I do wonder what he said in Rogan's podcast. He did a, a really good interview with Joe Rogan the other day. They were talking about the the attempts by Tuss Science to shut down all conversation around important topics surrounding COVID. And here's what Russell Brand had to say. Okay, we're going to get to the clip, but before that, Ben, are you actually on board with the idea that science is trying to shut down all important discussions revolving COVID? That is the most ridiculous claim I've ever heard. Science is literally the opposite, trying to find out more about COVID. But part of that also comes with protecting public health, so a huge responsibility is to debunk pseudoscience and make sure the public doesn't misunderstand something. Meanwhile, you and Russell are fighting against proper scientific information by spewing shit like this, especially on the most popular podcast in the world. You are literally doing humanity a disservice. Anyway, moving on. And the horse medicine was the same. They had a, the option of saying, look, we don't know, that there's no evidence as yet that ivermectin is effective in these spaces because no one's trialling it because there's no money in it because science is a subset yeah. of big pharma and the economic imperatives that right thing. Ridiculous. Ivermectin is an anti-parasitic and is used quite often as a horse dewormer, but also in humans. I can't believe people are still talking about ivermectin. This is so ridiculous. First of all, it's an anti-parasitic, which means it wouldn't work against viruses. Second of all, there has actually been research on this already. Whenever there's a conspiracy theory out there that could potentially cause people's lives, you bet some scientists are going to go and look at the ongoing research and find out what's going on behind some of these. And ivermectin is no exception. Just because you didn't go out of your way to find research about this doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay, so this conspiracy theory started out when ivermectin showed to have some effect on the replication of SARS-CoV-2 in a laboratory setting. And then upon further investigation, it turns out that clinical trials conducting such research were mostly limited in its study design, simply didn't do it correctly, or just showed no good evidence of it being effective at an acceptable dosage. So there you go. There has been research after all. It's amazing how you can miss things out there if you don't look for them. No one's doing experiments into natural immunity because natural immunity is not profitable. No one's doing those. Those experiments are not being underwritten. There's no clinical trials for that because no one wants that data for vitamin D or for steroids or for all of the things that came out yeah. as ultimately effective once the profits have been gleaned. Okay, two major problems with this. First of all, private companies do have incentive to look into natural immunity, specifically using it against their new treatment or vaccine to collect data on how their product compares. Second of all, there are already plenty of studies out there that compare natural immunity to vaccines. And this is even before COVID, where it was already common knowledge that natural immunity is generally inferior due to its inability to target specific epitopes compared to vaccines. For example, if you get infected by a virus, your body produces antibodies for all the antigens on the virus, leaving behind a variety of memory cells for your natural immunity. But a vaccine, on the other hand, we can target, say, specifically the spike protein, and that is way more effective, because getting antibodies that target the one antigen that matters in an infection will better prevent their attachment and thus entry into your cells. A virus with an antibody attached on a useless antigen can still infect. A virus with an antibody attached to a spike protein cannot. It's a simple concept, really, but of course, that doesn't always mean natural immunity is worse. It's just generally worse because we can do better from vaccines. So what kind of research has there been for COVID, then? Well, it turns out that vaccinated immunity is better, with a lower chance of infection and all-around better protection. Huh, who could have guessed such an outcome? Oh wait, that's literally the expected result based on everything we know about natural and vaccinated immunity. So again, Russell, the research is there, you just have to go look for it. It's frustrating listening to someone who hasn't even gone out of his way to look into this, spewing that there is no research on the most popular podcast in the world. Disgusting behavior. Okay, so he's not wrong about this. That, that Big Pharma obviously does not have a tremendous interest in researching natural immunity because there's no profit margin there. Fair, they wouldn't necessarily have any interest in looking at natural immunity compared to no immunity at all, but that's where the academic sciences come in. Plus, we all know that natural immunity is better than no immunity. But the question at hand was it compared to vaccinated immunity, which as we've seen already has plenty of research for. But that's what he's missing is that's where the government theoretically should step in, right? So when it comes to the government, 
and lack of profit incentive. That would be like a, a question of the commons, right? Where there's a public good that needs to be pursued and isn't going to be pursued by private industry and where the government has a rather large stake in determining whether natural immunity is just as good as vax immunity or better. And the government did nothing about it. That's the part that's insane. No, actually, the part that's insane is the fact that you, Ben, also didn't do your research before making this video. There are plenty of studies out there that already compare natural to vaccinated immunity. All you have to do is open your computer and read them. Plus, the government and public funding is like the baseline of academic research. In case you didn't know, because it really seems like you don't know, there are two branches of research here, academia and industry. While industry, like you said, would only really conduct research that benefits their product, academia isn't like that as it uses public funding. So that's where the questions get answered. Questions that private industries wouldn't normally try to answer. So yeah, it's there. You're not surprised the big pharma didn't research natural immunity. Why would they? Again, that's not actually their job. They create drugs to solve problems. But if natural immunity were to be researched, wouldn't it be the government that could have saved billions and billions and billions of dollars by looking into natural immunity? And by the way, saved economies all across the world by looking into natural, why didn't they do that? That's the real question. <laughs> This is so stupid. First of all, natural immunity has the massive, massive drawback where you have to be infected by the actual virus first. Good luck getting natural immunity to, say, the elderly and immunocompromised who can likely die upon first contact with the virus. Secondly, even if natural immunity is somehow better, you're never going to effectively use it for that simple reason. Plus, it's just so stupid to think about. Oh, this virus is killing people? In order to prevent you from getting it, we're going to give it to you first. Like, what kind of logic is that? The point is, even if natural immunity is better, which it's not, vaccines would still be useful to produce, purchase, and distribute. So I think Russell's answer would be that a lot of members of the government are kind of in the pay of big pharma. That's not a terrible answer, but I think that there's something else going on, which is that a lot of members of government like the control. They like being in control. I mean, I'm not going to deny that there's money involved. There have been rare occasions where some people in the FDA were bribed by private pharmaceutical companies. Of course, the system isn't perfect, and as long as there's money involved, the system will never be perfect. Luckily, these are exception cases and not the norm. That being said, that has really nothing to do with natural immunity here. And if they'd actually researched natural immunity, if they had looked at the data very early on from the Santa Clarita study that was done by Jay Bhattacharya, looking at the levels of antibodies that were prevalent in Santa Clarita, like really early on, then that might have undercut their entire argument for controlling every aspect of your life. <laughs> controlling every aspect of your life. Yep, that's what it is. It's all about control, not about protecting public health. You crazy people will always have crazy ideas. That being said, so you're saying that a study has been conducted? Okay, so there has been studies then. You literally were just ranting about how they don't exist and okay, whatever, man, you do you. But of course, no one is saying that natural immunity doesn't do anything. It's obviously a very powerful mechanism that our bodies have developed that keeps every one of us alive. It produces antibodies and memory cells that stay in your blood in the event of a second infection. But that doesn't mean it's better than vaccinated immunity and it doesn't mean it doesn't have a cost to it, which is the cost of needing to be infected first. But again, I'm glad that that Russell is having that conversation with Joe Rogan. Really? I'm not. How can I be happy when people spew such nonsense on a popular podcast? And why does Joe Rogan keep giving megaphones to these idiots? All right, whatever. That's the end of the video. Huge shout out as usual to Fireshard, Alan Morton, Miss Fixit, and Edward Martin. And I'll see you in the next one.